When I got the first one, I was literally seconds away from stepping onto the plane when a call from unknown blared from my cell phone. It was a ringtone I hadn't heard before, one I was pretty sure hadn't come with the phone. Normally, I wouldn't have stopped to answer it, but I was expecting a call about a job I had interviewed for the previous week. I took a deep breath in and accepted the call. Hello? A woman's voice, garbled and strange, as if her vocal cords had been shredded. She was trying desperately to choke out speech. Despite the unnerving, fractured quality of her voice, her tone was insistent and eerily calm. And the call ended. I froze. I had always had a slight phobia of air travel, and something about the call just... (laughs) There was no way, no way, I was about to get on a seven-hour flight now. I turned around, headed toward the food court. I'd just get on another flight later in the afternoon, I figured. I watched from the airport Starbucks three hours later as every TV in the terminal lit up with the crash footage of the plane I should have been on. No survivors. Not a single one. I tried to trace the call. So did the police. But there was nothing to trace. There was no evidence my phone had ever received a call around that time. They analyzed phone records, incoming and outgoing communication to my phone. Nothing. I wasn't making it up. I couldn't have been. That wasn't the only call. Throughout the years, They were few and far between, but always right. And I always listened. Do not go on that blind date tonight. Five months later, my would-be date was convicted of killing four men, all with my hair color and build. He found him in a shallow grave about 250 feet from the diner he offered to take me to. Do not drive to the concert tonight. Eighteen-wheeler lost control, plowed into a line of cars. Every driver crushed. Every driver killed. In the stretch of freeway, I would have been driving down. No matter if I got a new phone, if I moved across the country, the calls would still come. I could almost feel the presence of whatever it was, whatever it is, watching over me. I imagined being at the bottom of a freezing ocean, still trapped in my coach section airplane seat, or being in that mass grave across from the diner, or watching an 18-wheeler skidding toward my car, knowing death was imminent. I'd get this tightness in my chest. I'd think about how thin that line really was. How close I'd gotten. If I hadn't had a job interview I was waiting to hear back from, I'd have never listened to that first call. And that... (laughs) That would be it for me. It always felt like something was coming for me. But there was always this... This fractured warped voice with these calls that never seemed to exist after I heard them. Self-destructing warning signals rotting away before my eyes. And I was alive. I had a bad feeling about this cruise. I'd planned it as a guy's week away with some of my old friends from college and was looking forward to a week in the tropics in the dead of winter, but Part of me could almost sense that the call was coming. Maybe I'd watched Titanic one too many times, but there was a little nagging fear from the start. I hoped it would be fine, but I I knew that if something was going to happen, I'd get the call. I'd know. Now, a week before I'm set to go on the cruise after stepping into my apartment 
after returning from dinner with a friend. I noticed my cell has a message from unknown. I've never had to leave a message before. I haven't checked it all night. Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'd really wanted to go on that cruise too. Ah well. Not worth whatever horrific fate awaited me in that cold, dark ocean. <laughs> I click play message and feel my stomach drop as I listen to the voice. Sounding horrifically distorted, as if it emanates from a throat slashed to ribbons, crackling with more urgency than ever before. I look around my apartment as the voice on the phone repeats the same phrase over and over again. <laughs> 